Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Today I am going to show you how to make two little double chocolate treat holders. These are made to fit Giardelli squares, but of course you could put any treat in that you come across. This one has a treat on both sides and it looks like this. And this one has the two treats and they pop on the inside, but they're both quick and easy to make. So without further ado, let me get started and show you how we do that. So the first one, the one that is the double square one, it needs a piece of six by six designer series paper. This is actually Sweetest Christmas, which was a paper from last year's Stampin' Up! holiday catalogue. But it's got the candy canes and, you know, peppermint and all that good stuff. So that's why I dug this one out to use. But of course, you can use any that you have. So bringing in the paper trimmer, what we need to do is score it diagonally. One way. So I'm going to line up both ends in the, oops, both points in the paper trimmer. And then I am just going to score it gently. And actually, you know, I was going to make it this way, but I think I'm actually going to do it this way around. So what we need to do is fold it in half on that score line that we've just created. So I'm going to line up the point. Furnish it with the bone folder. So this is the basis of crisscross so then we're going to line it up at three quarters of an inch and the nice thing about the stamping up paper trimmer is you've got an inch and a half on this side so the bulk of the paper can sit on the other side so I'm going to line it up at the three quarter edge a little bit harder to do because it's a point because normally you butt the straight edge up against the paper but we can follow the lines down and I'm just going to score that at three quarters of an inch and then I'm going to put one point at three inch and score up and down there and then flip it over and score three inches on the other side. And the only reason I flipped it is because, like I just said, it's easier to put something up against the paper. Otherwise, you'd be balancing on the point. So that's all the scoring taken care of so what we need to do now is fold the first three quarter inch fold that we did and we'll just do it with a little burnish and then we will score the points and fold those on those crease lines and give them burnish and now we're going to basically create a burrito so we're going to open it up and fold inward on that side and inward on the other side and as you'll see the point goes further than the fold so you've got a little bit of excess I'm just going to bring in my snips and quickly trim that off you don't need to but I just like to for neatness of the straight edge and then likewise on the other side so just like that and then what we need to do is put tear and tape well we need to put adhesive down each side where it's going to crisscross over and because it's going to be pushed outwards a little bit with the fatness of the square I just like to use tear and tape so let me find the ever disappearing edge so we'll put a little bit just up to the score line. You just want to make sure that where you've put it, when you close this side over, it's not going to be visible. So a little bit like that. And then one last little piece is actually going to go on this side. So when it folds over, it sticks this edge down. So there we go. So now I'm just going to peel off the backing paper. And 
fold it flat. Oh, I can actually see there's just a little smidge of tape on here. So let me just get rid of that. So now we have this little burrito and what we need to do is on the fold lines that we made, we're going to create a W. So we'll fold this one over and now that it's all stuck down, we'll give the edges a good burnish. We'll do likewise on the other side, give that a good burnish. And then the one that's going to be the W, we will crease it the opposite direction. So we've now got the W going on. And then all we need to do is punch a hole in the top. Now, those of you who have stamped for a while might remember this huge monster and the only reason i'm using this one today is i can't find my regular quarter inch hole punch I have no idea where it's gone i've got every other size and this one actually has a quarter inch on it so i'm just going to slip it into there punch the hole i mean you can oops you can see the hole is there. That was the only thing I was trying to accomplish using that old relic. And then I'm going to take some of this lovely curly ribbon, which again is actually a retired one. So you can use any ribbon you have, or you can use cord or however you want to tie it together. And I'm just going to tie a quick little knot and a bow. This one just, I think I just need to trim the edges. No, actually, the nine inches was just long enough. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to bring over the lovely little Giardelli squares. These are the regular size ones. You can put mini ones in, they'll fit, or little mini Heath bars, or like I say, any treat that's more or less flat. I do like to fold the flaps under on mine and pop that in. And then fold this one over and pop that one in too. And ta-da, there you have it, a double-sided treat holder. I did make a few more actually just to bring these in to show you. I did the mint ones and I used some old retired Christmas paper with gold bits on. So I used the gold ribbon. And then they've got these lovely new, oh, I think they're new, they're new to me, the gingerbread cookie ones they're a little bit thinner so I put those in a red based base but basically more or less all the same so that's the Giardelli version Giardelli that's the double sided treat version and then the other one we're going to make is this one this one's actually handy because you can put two fatter ones in without it bursting forward I use the the caramel ones tend to be a little bit fat and they push these ones out a little bit. So I saw this online and I thought, ooh, I am going to Giardelliarize these ones. So this one is actually quick and easy too. So you need a piece of cardstock. I'm using real red and it's seven and three quarters by two. And you need to punch the tops of them with a tag topper. I don't have a tag topper that I like. The one I have is a snowflake. And then I thought, let me create my own version. So I brought in an old scalloped punch. And let me just find a piece of real red, which I had. And now it's disappeared on me. But anyway, let me... You know what? I will come back. And when I find it, when it's sticking right next beside me, I will come back and show you how to do that. Open the punch. And if you slide this through, and if you can see, if you slide it as far as it will go, that it doesn't come back out again, you can see that it's, you just pop it back in. So it's as close to the top as you can get it. If you punch that, because you brought it through, it's obviously not gonna punch any of this, and you get the same topper look. So again, do the other side, of course. So you pull it through, rather, you don't put it in, 
and punch a whole circle out. You have to pull it through the punch, line it up with the edge, as close to the edge as you can get it. And just press and then the little piece will come out. And there you have what I would say is as good as the topper. Of course, if you don't have any punches, you don't have to do that. You could leave it round, you could do a corner rounder, however you want it to look. I just sometimes think if it's got more of a fancy top, it just looks makes it look like more of a fancy gift. So this is the piece of real red. So it's seven and three quarters by two punched at each end to make it look fancy and it scored at three and a half and four and a quarter and that makes the little basis of the box so we'll just give that a quick little score and then the designer series paper that's going to go around it is six inches by one and three quarters the original version I saw was six and a quarter. I thought, oh, but then you can't get it out of a piece of six by six cardstock. So I measured it and it does just fit. So this is scored at one, one and three quarters, three and three quarters and four and a half. So I had gone ahead and scored those quickly. So I'm just going to give them a light burnish. Don't want to do it too tight because we want to make sure that it will actually fit around the little box that we've created. So this is the overlap and it's going to be sort of like a belly band on this one. Let me just pop that one out of the way for now. And then what we need to do, actually, you know what I'm going to do before I start building any of it? I'm going to put the hole punch in. If you use one of the tag toppers, again, it gives you a hole punch which I don't have so let me bring in my lovely monster once more punch a quarter inch hole punch in it and then it's all set and done and then where this seam is I am just going to run a little bit of adhesive along and put the middle section of this up against the bottom and line up oops, line up the score marks or alternatively find the score marks and line that up that's a little bit easier to see perhaps so then we just need to put adhesive along the bottom of the other side oops And then when this goes around, I'm on thumbs today, we need to put a little bit of adhesive down this edge so it's going to stick the belly band round. So we will line this up and put it on the bottom, bring this one round and line it up with the bottom, but also line it up that it sticks to itself so now you've got a cute little box with a belly band on it it means the chocolate treats can't fall out the side and it adds to the fun of the overall box then last but not least we need to make a little tag so i'm going to cut this little fluted edge punch which is one and three eighths out of real red and then the smaller one out of a piece of white ah! and do a little bit of stamping so again this is really dig out your retired stamps Alison so we're just going to use an old candy cane which came in a Christmas selection and stamp a candy cane on the side with real red and then I'm going to I found a for you that was small enough in I don't know what this is April of 2018 paper pumpkin so this is one of those times when a paper pumpkin subscription comes into its own so for you stamp it in the real red pop it on the side and then last but not least just to give it a little bit of bling 
because we all love bling, don't we? And I will put a red rhinestone just on the top. So then we can attach this to the front. Get a couple of dimensionals. One on the top, one on the bottom. Peel off the backing papers quickly. And then we can stick that to the front. And then again, we'll have a little bit of the wiggly ribbon. Ruffled ribbon, I'm not quite sure what its name is. Mini ruffled ribbon, but wiggly, wiggly edge. And we've got the two Giardelli treats. So again, I'm going to fold the sides over and pop them in. Then thread the ribbon through the two holes together. Come on, little ribbon, where are you? Tie a cute little bow. Have it two different versions of two different treats so you've got the double-sided one where you know obviously one on each side or you can just pop two in the middle and like I say these are the these are the peppermint bark which is a little bit wobbly these ones are the caramel and they're a little bit fatter so they're a little bit more stable in there if you are local to the area just so you know this Sunday December 10th a week from today as I'm recording this and it will be in five days time when this goes live on Facebook. I will be at this shop till you drop in Homedale, New Jersey. So if you're nearby, come on by and visit my table. There'll be lots of these little treats for sale. If you like what you've seen, please consider subscribing. I would love that. Helps keep my algorithm busy. And last but not least, thanks so much for watching.